good morning, good afternoon, good day, and good evening. Don't know what time of day it is for you, but for me, it's a good time of day. We're back at it. It's another vibrant, another wonderful, another great day. Running some technical issues, but I think we're doing good. I'm excited. I'm here with you. I didn't want to miss another day. We talk about black history a lot, and today's another day where I want to talk about some things with black history. Normally, I would get it done in the morning. Didn't happen this morning. So we're going to get to it now. One of the things that will also be coming up here shortly, we're going to be talking about, well, you know what? I'm going to say that as a for tomorrow. But as a today, I'm not going to bury the lead. I'm not going to sit up there and long stroke you. I'm not going to make you wait for it. Because one of, as a, one of the great things over the past couple of days that I've been noting, um, I should have covered it on Saturday when it actually happened or the day that it happened in history as far as our birth and everything. However, didn't cover it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to cover it today. And I want you guys, I'm hoping that you guys, because we finally got our sisters. And this, this is a sister-in-law. This is a, literally, a sister and she's in-law. And the person I'm talking about right now is uh, uh, is this sister here. Let me let me share this over here with you. I'm let's talk about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Is that which is put on inferiors by superiors? This, by superiors. Uh, this sister here. Now, Separation is done voluntarily by two equals. When you find an old white school, they don't call it a segregated school. They call it a separate school. When you find an old Negro school, they call it a segregated school. Because it was set up by the white man. Yes, if it was an old black right. school that had yes, been set up by the black man himself, on. run by yes, the black man advice. himself, with the curricula law. that they follow, uh, put in the school by the black man himself, they would call it a separate school. And it would be just as independent and, uh, and on equal, equal, equal basis with the white school. But because the Negro schools in Harlem have been set up by the white man himself on an inferior basis with inferior teachers in inferior buildings, it's a segregated school. And we don't go for any form of segregation. Here in this country, anyway. So let let let's get into it. And and who is this individual that we're talking about right now? And I'm just gonna jump into her bio, right? Her she was born as a 1926 uh, Violetta uh, Miss Anderson became the first African American female attorney admitted to practice law before the United States Supreme Court. Anderson was born on July 18th. 1882 in London, England, to Richard and Marie uh, Neatley. The family immigrated to the United States and settled in Chicago, Illinois. Forgive me for my, uh, as I, I'm looking at my, my screen right now, there's some, a, a notification just came up. Uh, Illinois, uh, when Anderson was a young child. She graduated from Chicago High School in 1899, furthering her, her education at Chicago uh, Athenaeum in the Chicago uh, Seminar of Sciences. She married Albert Johnson in 1903. However, the marriage quickly ended in divorce uh, in December of 1906. So that's the show. I was only married for three years. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Am I, am I right? Am I right? No. Uh, she married Dr. Daniel H. Anderson, an African-American general practitioner, and, he, and she took his last name. Anderson served as a courtroom reporter for 15 years before attending Chicago Law School. So she was reading the law at the time. In 1920, Anderson graduated from the law school and established a private practice after passing the bar exam and being licensed before the United States Eastern District, Illinois. Anderson was one of the first women of any race in the state of Illinois to engage in private practice. In 1992, she successfully defended a woman accused of murdering her husband. This courtroom success resulted in her being appointed assistant prosecutor in Chicago. She was a both the first African-American and first woman appointed to that post. And she was admitted to practice before the U.S. Supreme Court on January 29th, 1926. She, that's a lot of firsts. First in Chicago, first in the U.S., first in Chicago courts, first in U.S. federal courts, first in the Supreme Court of the United States. That is a bio and a half that you, as in when you're looking at it, and you're looking at all the things that she was able to accomplish no wonder. I mean, this sister, I mean, powerful, great sister. I said, I was looking forward to, obviously, I'm biased again. Sue me. I love talking about people in law, highlighting 
their resumes and their bios. I know a lot of people would prefer sports, and I know a lot of people would prefer to talk about entertainment. Those are great. You're going to get plenty of that. You can get that on just about any corner of YouTube. Go ahead, click another channel. I guarantee you're going to be able to get sports and entertainment. What you're not going to get is professionals talking about law and the like and their contributions to American society because that is not the narrative they want pushed. They want to have you push the narrative that black people, our people, we, indigenous people, only primarily deal with entertainment and law. That being said, let's move on to the next one because now these next two, we're going to be dealing with things that have actually happened on this date and uh, on July 18th in history that are, are significant for us as black people. Uh, so we're going to talk about those things and we're going to get into them. So what? As I, so what's the next one? The next one is going from furthest to soonest, I, I guess. Let's start off with the one that happened at the earliest. This was back in the 1700s, right? So in the 18th century, we're talking about the 1700s, 1753. I know I don't cut you Christian people a lot of slack. This is the time I guess I'm going to give you guys a lot of slack because we're going to highlight somebody who was a Christian in the faith at the time. And I know I had a whole stream on religion. And you can go back and all my issues or my grievances are there. But I'm going to highlight a brother at the time. And it talks about uh, this brother who was born in West Hartford, Connecticut back in 1753. He had a white mom. He had a black father. That part they definitely know and we can say for certain that, that, was, that that's what it was. And uh, he had his entire 80 years as a congregationalist in New England. And uh, he was also in the Continental Army at the time during the Revolutionary War or the Counter-Revolutionary War, depending on how you want to look at that 1776 debacle that we have or uh, uprising, however you want to frame that. He, he had a prominent part in that as well. So who was he? He was the very first Amer black man in this country to get an honorary college degree. Right, so th that's who he. That's one of the things he did. But when looking at uh, who he was, it has a the lineage we t we talked about: white mother, black father. Before as a here before the quote unquote founding of this country. Uh, so he was born in West Hartford on today's date back in 1753. His mother was a Scottish immigrant indentured servant. Is with the rumored lineage is for him. And his father was an enslaved African-American who lived and served on the plantation of John Hayes. So that's where he comes, as it asks his lineage, that's where he comes from. That's as a, that's as a, when, when talking about him, uh, Mr. Len, Lemuel, as I say, that's, that's his, that's his history. That, that's where, uh, Mr. Mr. Lemuel, uh, Haynes gets the last name from the slave owner. His father was rumored to be a slave. His mother, a Scottish indentured servant, and he came about, and he had a very uh, robust history. It's almost like when you read it, it you know what it reminds me of. I, I don't as a I almost I almost want to tell him to start running because it reminds me of Forrest Gump. I mean, this dude touched a lot of different things, and he was instrumental in a lot of different um, aspects of society at that time. And he was very influential, and you don't hear about that a lot, of black people actually at that time having influence in society. Uh, you just hear about the slave aspect of it. So that being said, we're going to we're gonna transition right back over because this next thing that happened, it was, they made a movie about it, right? Movie was made back in 1989. Yes, I'm dating myself because I've seen it in theaters at the time. The movie was called Glory, and the movie Glory was, was based on what actually happened today, starting January 18th, I mean, July 18th, way back when, right? So, back, back during the Civil War, you had, you had the real-life account of what the movie Glory was based off of, and the real-life account was the Battle of Fort Wagner or Morris Island. Um, and it's since been lost or reclaimed by the sea. So the actual location where this battle happened has since been eroded and, and returned to the sea, the actual fort and everything else. And they have a lot of historical uh, reimagined, remade 
uh, historical forts for that for that time frame, but the actual fort and everything has been reclaimed by the sea. Uh, and, but that has a, and it's based off of the 54th Massachusetts uh, uh, militia that went in there. Very first all black militia, or I should say all black, since you had the white officers. But this was the very first black militia or regiment that was that was here in the United States, and it happened during that time of the uh, the Civil War here in the U.S. And so that was as a, it was an exciting time. It was something that everybody was excited about. They made a movie about it. Um, and it was the very first time. And again, since that time, that fort and everything uh, has been lost to sea. And the movie it was a very dramatized, very glorified uh, telling of that situation, which was unsuccessful in the grand scheme of things. So everybody in the 54th lost their lives. So that very first black regiment, the 54th Massachusetts, was wiped out. But it showed that black people were willing to fight and you could have a black regiment that would engage and that would stand and do the fighting for themselves and that they didn't always need white rescuing, even though they did have white officers at the time. So those are the three things that I really want to cover. Two of them actually happened today, July 18th in history. The other one was the 16th, happened a couple of days ago. And that was our sister-in-law actually getting in there and getting after it. So that's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to cover for you guys today. And uh, there's something specific I, I want to cover. And I'm thinking, should I cover it later on tonight or early, early, early in the morning? And I'm thinking it's probably going to be early, early, early in the morning. So we're going to get some black history, but... There's something I want to talk about as far as something that's very instrumental in helping and how we in helping us to deal with our kids, with our black children, and helping them to love themselves, have a level of self love for themselves, and not the self hatred that this society is really ingraining in them that they don't like the color of their skin, the texture of their hair, and why that is, and what it is that we can do going forward to try and see we can quell that a little bit push back if we can at least identify what it is and it's one of those things that's going to be an out of the mouth of babes situation so join us tomorrow we're going to be talking about that i think i'm gonna put the black history on hold because i definitely want to make sure i cover that the intent was to cover it yesterday but we're going to cover that tomorrow in the morning i think what i'm also going to do with that one i'm not gonna say i think what i'm also going to do with that one i'm going to open this up i'm going to open the platform up if you're as a, if you're up in the morning getting ready to go to work, hop on in. I'm gonna drop a link. Come on in. Let's sit there and let's talk about it, and let's see exactly what's going on and why we should be concerned, or not, and not even just concerned. Why we should, uh, as a, just actively oppose this situation. And when we have a little more knowledge of what that situation is. It'll give us a little, I say, a plan of action at the very least. Even if you don't agree with my plan of action, at least we can take a plan of action and look at this is what happened. This is how they're doing it. This is what we need to do in order to try and protect and safeguard our children because they're coming after our kids. That's the that's the bottom line. That's the long and short of it. That's where we're at with it. And I want to make sure that as they're coming after our kids, at least, at the very least, uh, we have an idea and we can come up with a plan of action on how to protect our kids because it really sucks if you're not able to protect the kids and they keep on eroding. I mean, it's they, they, they've already done a great job of it so far and it's one of those things that the more they do it, the better they get at it and we just keep on dropping the ball and not acknowledging, not dealing with, not addressing how it is and what it is they're doing to our culture now and in the future and how it is is going to be just this self-repeating cycle it's going to be very cyclical and keeping us stuck and rooted in where it is they want us to be stuck and rooted at and so I, I think it's very important for us to identify it and not just to identify it I think it's very important for us to get in there and make the necessary changes and adjustments to make sure that we're where we need to be and with that being said, I know I didn't tell you guys before. I love you. I hope you guys are having a great day. I know I had a phenomenal day. And may you always, always, always have peace in your life. And with that.
that, I am going to transition us out and have you guys have a blessed evening.